In this book, Clear outlines the latest findings from various fields, including psychology, biology, and neuroscience to create a simple and effective how-to guide for making good habits possible in your own life. Here's what you'll learn about in this audiobook summary. How to create good habits and eliminate bad ones. How to develop lasting change and long-term motivation in your life. How to design your environment for success and growth, and much, much more on how to create and maintain the habits you need to succeed and achieve your goals, both personally and professionally. Here's a quick tweetable summary to describe this book in a nutshell. Tiny, persistent steps over time will breed powerful results. Forget about the goal, focus on the process, and make high-level changes. Here are a few crucial quotes pulled directly from the book. Quote, This is the meaning of the phrase atomic habits, a regular practice or routine that is not only small and easy to do, but also the source of incredible power, a component of the system of compound growth. Quote, Goals are good for setting a direction. But systems are best for making progress. And the final crucial quote When nothing seems to help, I go and look at a stone cutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet, at the hundred and first blow, it'll split into two. And I know it was not that last blow that did it, but all that had gone before. All right, you ready to dive into the big ideas? Let's do it with big idea number one. Aim to get 1% better every day. At the outset of the book, Clear tells us that if you can get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. Conversely, if you get 1% worse each day for a full year, you'll decline nearly down to zero. Now, you want to focus on making small improvements each day. That's the point of this big idea, taking small steps daily, because over time, those small improvements end up compounding. They equate to massive change. Bad habits also compound over time. If you delay working on something every day, the bad habit of procrastinating will multiply and seep into other areas of your life. For example, say you want to lose weight. Instead of focusing on losing 50 pounds, you want to concentrate on working out for 30 minutes three times a week for 30 days, for instance. And over time, you'll begin to see changes in your body. 30 minutes a day, three times a week, for 52 weeks is 4,680 minutes of exercise. Now, That's a lot of exercise time that you put in, but you don't feel that because you're not doing it all in one big go. You're taking small steps daily, you're making small improvements daily, and those small incremental improvements compound over time, and they lead to the weight loss goal that you had set out to achieve. In the book, Clear tells a story about the British cycling team. Now, since 1908, British cyclists won only one gold medal at the Olympics. And in over a century, not one single British cyclist had ever won the Tour de France. In 2003, the team hired Dave Brailsford as their new coach or performance director. Brailsford's coaching strategy was an interesting one. His method was to push the team to get just 1% better each day. He dug deep, searching for tiny improvements that could be made on a daily basis. Things like having the seats on the bikes redesigned for extra comfort and stability. They put rubbing alcohol on the tires for better grip. They experimented with different racing suits for better aerodynamics. They tested various massage gels for better muscle recovery. They tested electrically heated shorts. Now, these changes they made were tiny, or at least seemingly so, but over time, they made a significant impact. 
tiny changes, remarkable results. From 2007 to 2017, the British cycling team won 178 world championships, 66 Olympic or Paralympic gold medals, and they had five Tour de France wins. In a nutshell, tiny improvements often appear small, but minute changes are transformational if you stick with it. Now, here's your actionable insight for this first big idea so that you can take this and put it into practice within your own life. You want to set yourself a challenge to get 1% better each day for the next 30 days. If you want to improve your knowledge on a particular topic, for example, read five pages every day. If you're writing a book, write five pages a day for the next 30 days. Pay attention to small action steps, chunk things down, make small changes, and achieve more. As Clear tells us in the book, all big things come from small beginnings. The seed of every habit is a single, tiny decision. But as that decision is repeated, a habit sprouts and grows stronger. Big idea number two, focus on systems, not goals. Quote, if you want better results, then forget about setting goals and focus on your system instead. Unquote. The concept of focusing on systems instead of focusing on goals is a powerful one. There are a few problems associated with goals and focusing on goals. Number one, winners and losers have the same goal. Every Olympic athlete, for instance, has a goal of winning a gold medal. What sets you apart from your competitor is the daily habits that you cultivate to become a better athlete. Paying attention to small improvements daily is the most effective way of building momentum and achieving massive results. Number two, the second reason why goals can be problematic at times is this. Achieving a goal is a short-lived change. You set yourself a goal to tidy up your disorganized office desk, for instance. You spend hours doing this, and then finally it's done. The goal is achieved. But if you forget about the reasons why your desk got like that in the first place, well, the desk is eventually going to get messy again. However, if you set yourself the task of making small changes daily to ensure that your desk remains in an organized state, you're winning. You've made progress. The third problem associated with goal setting is that goals don't lead to long-term progress. According to Clear, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. When building effective daily systems, you want to create long-term change. When you work on goals, you focus on a particular development and then return back to old habits once you have achieved the goal. However, when you create systems, long-term habits, you move forward. You make high-level changes. Here's an actionable insight for you from this second big idea. Focus on your daily systems. Create some if you haven't already. The tiny action steps that you take each day to improve your life. You want to ideally create a system. First, set a goal that you want to achieve and then create systems in order to help you achieve that goal. See, the goal is an aspirational destination that you want to reach. And the system is what you're doing every day to eventually achieve that goal. And so instead of setting different goals every single day, Clear is saying, to set an aspirational goal, a long-term goal, and then create systems, habits, processes, put those in place in order to eventually help you achieve that goal or maintain that goal. That's really what he's talking about here. And the other idea here to keep in mind is to build those daily habits, daily habits like reading daily, drinking eight glasses of water daily, and meditating daily. See, there are goals attached here. You want to read daily so that you can maintain the goal of growing intellectually, mentally. You want to drink eight glasses of water daily to maintain the goal of general health and well-being. You want to meditate daily for the goal of spiritual growth. See, there are goals attached to pretty much everything that we do, but we generally have an issue 
when we think about the goal while we're trying to achieve it. So the effective way to do this is to set up processes, habits to focus on on a daily basis or a regular basis to achieve the goal over the long run. We don't think about the goal on a daily basis. We think about the practices, the processes, the habits. And eventually, as long as we focus on those improvements, those tiny little things that we do on a daily basis, those small actions we take, eventually we do achieve that goal. But don't focus on the goal on a daily basis. Focus on the practices required in order for you to eventually achieve that goal. Big idea number three, create a success-driven environment. Quote, the most powerful of all human sensory abilities, however, is vision. The human body has about 11 million sensory receptors. Approximately 10 million of those are dedicated to sight. Some experts estimate that half of the brain's resources are used on vision, unquote. What you see around you can lead to a huge transformation. Your environment can either stifle you or it can propel you. Clear emphasizes this big idea by highlighting a story about the energy crisis of the 1970s. Dutch researchers back then conducted a study. They observed energy usage in a small town near Amsterdam. Their findings revealed that some households were using 30% less energy than their neighbors. The results indicated that homeowners who kept their energy meters in the hallway used less power than those who kept their meters in the basement. Now, although it might not seem like it at first blush, this is actually a great example of how powerful of a role your environment plays within your life. How so? Well, it's really pretty simple. The people in the study with energy meters in their hallways used less energy because the meter was in their immediate purview. It was clearly visible in their environment rather than hidden away in the basement. Let's take a quick look at a few more examples. You're less likely to practice your guitar if you have it hidden away at the back of your closet. You're less likely to take your vitamins if you hide them in your kitchen cabinet. You're less likely to read that book you've been meaning to read if it's pushed to the back of your bookshelf. And you're less likely to write that book that you want to write if your notebooks, pens, and laptop are stashed away in a drawer. So here's an actionable insight for you. Set yourself up for success by changing your environment to meet your needs. You want to switch things up. Place the books that you want to read on your coffee table, on your desk, or somewhere that you will see them every day. Write down your daily processes and paste them to your bedroom wall, on your bathroom mirror, or on your refrigerator door. Keep your surroundings tidy and neat to make things easier to find and to provide you with a clear space to cultivate good daily habits. Big idea number four. All habits are based on a four-step system. Cue, craving, response, and reward. Let's break each of these down, shall we? Number one, Q. Information that tells us there will be a reward. For example, the smell of a cake baking in the oven, a dark room waiting for someone to push the light switch. Number two, craving. The motivation to do something to get the reward. This is when you think about what you need to do to taste that freshly baked cake. The cake is your motivation. Number three, we have response. Now, you have to act to get the reward that you want. And then finally, number four is the reward. You receive the reward and feel satisfied. Here's your actionable insight. What is rewarded is repeated. What is punished is avoided. Positive emotions cultivate habits. Negative emotions destroy them. Make habit formation easier for yourself by thinking of a reward that promotes positive emotions. When you run three times a week, you feel energized and motivated to continue. The habit you need to form here is the habit to get up, put your running shoes on, and get out the door. Big idea number five, the four laws of behavior change. Quote, the four laws of behavior change are a simple set of rules we can use to build better habits. They are Number one, make it obvious. Number two, make it attractive. Number three, make it easy. And number four, make it satisfying. 
unquote. So make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying if you want to change a behavior. Let's break each of these down. First, you want to make it obvious. Don't hide the books you need to read or the fruit you want to eat. Display them to remind yourself to form new habits. Number two, make it attractive. If you want to read more, read the books you like to read, and it'll encourage you to do so. Third, make it easy. If you want to eat more fruit, eat the fruits that are easy to eat. And then finally, make it satisfying. If you're satisfied, you'll want more. Apply this to all good habits and do the opposite for bad habits. Make them invisible, unattractive, difficult, and unsatisfying. Here's your actionable insight. Whenever you want to change your behavior, focus on these factors. Number one, how can I make it obvious? Number two, how can I make it attractive? Number three, how can I make it easy? Number four, how can I make it satisfying? For example, how can I make it obvious? Establish a running habit by placing your running shoes at the foot of your bed. How can I make it attractive? Buy nice running shoes and some new workout clothes. How can I make it easy? By starting small. I can run or walk for 10 minutes a day. How can I make it satisfying? By preparing a delicious, healthy meal when I finished my run. Big idea number six. Track your habits with a habit tracker. A habit tracker is a simple way to hold yourself accountable without becoming overwhelmed. As the name entails, a habit tracker tracks your habits. It's a tool that allows you to quantify your behaviors and track how consistent you really are in acquiring or removing specific ones. It allows you to keep track of all the good habits you want to form and all the bad habits you want to eliminate. At the end of each day, you highlight the habits you manage to stick to. This system is often called the Seinfeld Productivity Hack. The comedian, Jerry Seinfeld, used to mark his calendar with an X every day in which he wrote new jokes. His goal was to write new jokes every single day. So he got this huge calendar and he wrote a giant X for each day that he wrote new jokes. And his goal was to not break the chain of X's. And this motivated him to cultivate the habit of creating new jokes every day. So here's an actionable insight for you to take this and put it into practice within your own life. Track your habits and have visual proof of how far that you've actually come, how far you're actually getting, the progress you're making. Use the habit tracking system to hold yourself accountable and to track your progress. For example, mark your habit tracker each day that you manage to read 15 pages of a book. Mark your habit tracker each day you manage to drink eight large cups of water. Big idea number seven, use the two-minute rule. Quote, decisive moments set the options available to your future self. Unquote. Every day, there are a handful of moments that deliver significant impact. In the book, these are referred to as decisive moments. Now, the two-minute rule states that when you start a new habit, it should take less than two minutes to do. And any habit, any habit, can be scaled down to a two-minute version of itself. For example, read before bed each night becomes read one page. Do 30 minutes of yoga becomes take out my yoga mat. Study for class becomes open my notes. Fold the laundry becomes fold one pair of socks. Run three miles becomes tie my running shoes. Here's your actionable insight. The idea behind this is to make your habits as easy as possible to start. Get yourself into the habit of doing something small, then building up to the more intense version of that habit. A new habit, it shouldn't feel like a challenge for you. You want to master the art of showing up and keep in mind that you need to standardize before you can optimize. Start today. Doesn't matter what habit you're working on. You can always do something. You can do something to move the ball forward. For example, let's say you've got a goal to write a book. Instead of setting a target to write 10,000 words a day, which is very difficult, set a target to write one page a day. Just one page. If you find that too difficult, write a paragraph. Start small. 
get comfortable, and then build up towards doing more. Big idea number eight. Use the Goldilocks rule to stay motivated. Quote, The Goldilocks rule states that humans experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are right on the edge of their current abilities. Not too hard, not too easy, just right. Unquote. Let's say you want to improve your tennis skills. Let's assume you're a beginner. Not bad by any means, but you've definitely got some room for improvement, room for growth. If you spend most of your time practicing with a four-year-old, you'll probably get bored pretty quickly, and you definitely won't improve your tennis game. If you try practicing with a U.S. Open tennis champion on a daily basis, well, that's not going to work out very well either. It'll be way too difficult for you and way too boring for Roger Federer. But if you really want to grow, you should aim to practice with someone who's not too hard, not too easy, but just right. That's the Goldilocks rule in a nutshell. And you can apply it to anything. Aim to work on tasks that are not too hard, not too easy, but just right. Do this and you'll boost your skills as well as your motivation to continue getting better. Here's how James puts it in the book. Wanting to improve your life is easy. Sticking with it is a different story. If you want to stay motivated for good, well, then start with a challenge that is just manageable. Measure your progress and repeat the process. Here's another example. Let's say you want to write 10,000 words a day. At first, writing 10,000 words a day is going to be too difficult. Instead, think about writing 3,000 words a day. Not too difficult but definitely not too easy. Here's your actionable insight. How can you apply the Goldilocks rule within your own life? With your own habits, how can you make it happen? How can you apply the Goldilocks rule? Identify your sweet spot, the spot that's not too hard, not too easy, but just right. And then get to work. Big idea number nine, habit stacking. Quote, when it comes to building new habits, you can use the connectedness of behavior to your advantage. One of the best ways to build a new habit is to identify a current habit you already do each day and then stack your new behavior on top. This is called habit stacking. Unquote. Here's a quick formula you can utilize for creating your own habit stacks. After current habit, I will new habit. After current habit, I will new habit. So after you do your current habit, you will execute your new habit. Some examples. In reading, after I brush my teeth in the morning, I will read for 20 minutes. In relationships, as soon as I get into bed each evening, I will tell my partner one thing about him or her that I'm grateful for. In daily planning, while I wait for my morning coffee to brew, I will write down my three most important goals for the day. You can utilize habit stacking for virtually any habit you're working to develop. Just keep in mind that the key to habit stacking is to tie your desired habit or behavior to something that you are already doing on a daily basis. Once you've got this down, Clear says, you can begin to create larger stacks by chaining small habits together. This allows you to take advantage of the natural momentum that comes from one behavior leading in to the next. Here's your actionable insight. Think of a habit you currently have. Next, think of a habit you want to develop. Now, use the habit stacking formula to bring it together and make it happen. Remember, after current habit, I will new habit. After I'm done doing my current habit, the one that you've already developed, I will then immediately dive in to my new habit. This, again, is about leveraging the power of momentum to develop habits, habit stacking. Big idea number 10, temptation bundling. Quote, we need to make our habits attractive because it is the expectation of a rewarding experience that motivates us to act in the first place. This is where a strategy known as temptation bundling comes into play. To illustrate this big idea, 
Clear tells the story of an engineering student named Ronan, who had the unhelpful habit of constantly binging shows on Netflix. Ronan wanted to binge watch less and exercise more. But he had a big problem on his hands. He loved binge watching and hated exercising. So he came up with a clever solution. He connected his stationary bike, his exercise bike, to his laptop and television. And then he coded a computer program that allowed him to watch Netflix only if he was also cycling at a certain speed. When he slows down, his TV or laptop automatically pauses. When he picks up the pace again, it starts playing again. Now, Ronan's solution to developing his exercise habit is an excellent example of temptation bundling, which works by linking an action you want to do with an action you need to do. For Ronan, bundling Netflix, the thing he wanted to do, with exercising on a stationary bike, the thing he needed to do, was exactly what he needed to get himself going. So how does this apply to you? And how can you use temptation bundling in your own life? Well, here's the formula, the temptation bundling formula. It goes like this. After habit I need, I will habit I want. After habit I need, I will habit I want. Some examples. If you need to wash your dishes but want to watch YouTube, here's how it would go. After I wash my dishes, I will watch YouTube videos for 20 minutes. As an alternative option, you can also choose to combine the two, like Ronan did with his exercise bike and Netflix, by watching YouTube only while you're washing your dishes. Another example, if you want to read the news but need to read a book. After I read my book for 30 minutes, I will read the news for 20 minutes. Another example, if you need to do some writing for work, but feel like you want to surf the web instead. After I've done 60 minutes of uninterrupted writing, I'll check my favorite blogs for 30 minutes. Okay, now let's talk about how you can do the same with your own habits here with an actionable insight. Think about a habit you need to develop. Next, think about a habit you want that you enjoy or like to do. Now, Use the temptation bundling formula to bring it together and make it happen. Again, here's the formula. After I execute habit I need, I will move into habit I want. Again, the formula is after habit I need, I will habit I want. Big idea number 11. Simple ways to form effective habits. Here are four practical and powerful strategies you can utilize to form your own habits. Number one, start a new good habit by setting what's called an implementation intention. The formula for which goes like this. I will behavior at time in location. Example number one, for exercise, I will work out for 60 minutes at 6 a.m. at my local fitness club. So can you see in that first example, you'll do the behavior exercise at a specific time, 6 a.m., at a specific location, your fitness club. So you break those down. That's an implementation intention. When you identify what you want to do, the time you're going to do it, and the location in which you'll be doing it. Here's another example. Meditation. I will meditate for five minutes at 7 a.m. in my backyard. Example number three, studying. I will study philosophy for 30 minutes at 5 p.m. in my room. Now, the studies that Clear cites in the book show that when we do this, when we identify the behavior and the time and the location, we're far more likely to actually do that behavior that we want to do, to execute that habit that we want to execute. All right, the second simple method for forming new habits is to use the habit stacking method, which we've discussed by attaching a new habit to a pre-established habit. Here's the formula for that again. After current habit, I will new habit. For example, after I finish my morning workout, your current habit, I will make a protein-rich smoothie for breakfast, the new habit that you need to develop, rather than having my usual bagel. See big idea number nine for more on this for habit stacking. Number three, the third simple way 
to help yourself form new habits is to combine habit stacking with temptation bundling to create an ongoing set of rules to guide your behavior. Here's the two-part formula. Part one, after current habit, I will habit I need. Part two, after habit I need, I will habit I want. So here's the logic behind combining habit stacking with temptation bundling. By focusing on your current habit and then moving on to a habit you might not want to do but need to do, and then moving on to a habit you want to do, you create this cycle that gives you the momentum and motivation to continue taking action even when you don't feel like it. Now, all these different formulas, they sound a lot more complex than they really are, but they'll get easier and easier after you write them out a few times and actually work your own habits into the mix. Here's a quick review of habit stacking and temptation bundling. After my current habit, I'll perform a habit I need. After I perform the habit I need, I will move on to the habit I want. Some examples? Example number one. If you want to browse social media but need to call clients. After I get back to my desk from lunch, I'll call three clients. So that's the need. And then, after I call three clients, I'll see what's happening on Twitter. That's the want. Example number two. If you want to watch TV but need to exercise more. After I get home from work, I'll change into my workout clothes and go running. After I finish running, I'll watch TV. So the goal here is this. Doing what you need to do means you get to do what you want to do. And this can drive behavior change, even if what you want to do seems trivial in comparison to what you need to do. And then finally, the fourth simple way to build better habits is to combine habit stacking with habit tracking. By tracking each day in which you execute your habits, you'll be more likely to actually form them. For more on tracking, refer to big idea number six. Closing notes. The key takeaway of Atomic Habits is this. To build good habits or break bad ones, use the four laws of behavior change laid out in this book. Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. Here's some actionable insights for you. Tiny steps, big gains. Breakthrough moments are often the result of many previous actions, which build up the potential required to unleash a major change. Significant changes, they don't happen overnight. They occur as a result of a series of tiny steps taken over time. As the personal development philosopher Jim Rohn said, success is a few simple disciplines practiced every day, while failure is simply a few errors in judgment repeated every day. Make just one change today, one change today, by telling yourself that you will execute a single small task each day. For example, let's say you want to run a marathon. Get your running shoes on each day and walk around the block or to the park and back home again. Now you can build upon that initial accomplishment bit by bit. Your next step would be to start running to the park and back three times per week while walking on other days, bit by bit, little by little. You grow and you get a little bit better every day until eventually you're running that marathon. Your next actionable insight is to build better habits in four simple steps. Remember to utilize the four laws of behavior change to build those better habits for yourself. How can I make it obvious? How do I make it attractive? How can I make it easy? How do I make it satisfying? Next actionable insight to keep in mind is that your environment matters. Environment is the invisible hand that shapes human behavior. You want to make the cues of good habits obvious in your environment and really hide the cues of bad habits from your environment. Your environment shapes the way that you think or feel. So if you want to lose weight, you'll need to change your eating habits and exercise. If your environment is not conducive to that, losing weight is going to be more difficult for you. 
So set yourself up for success by designing your environment to meet your needs. Fill your fridge and pantry with healthy foods. Purchase irresistible workout gear for yourself. Write your daily habits for losing weight on a large whiteboard. Cultivate good habits by designing a success-driven environment. Next, stop procrastinating by using the two-minute rule. Habits can be completed in a few seconds, but continue to impact your behavior for minutes or hours afterward. So instead of focusing on cultivating difficult habits, focus on building small habits that grow into big habits over time. A great way to do that is by leveraging the two-minute rule. David Allen, the author of the classic productivity book, Getting Things Done, says that when we start a new habit, it should take less than two minutes to do. So some examples of that. You want to write a book? You need to start writing first. One paragraph a day. Just start there. You want to read more? Start by reading one page a day. Just start there. You want to start a podcast? Start by learning one actionable thing per day about how to launch your own podcast. You want to get into the habit of exercising daily by performing two minutes of jumping jacks each day. You want to get into the habit of drinking more water by setting yourself a low target first and building up to more over time. Just start. That's the idea here. Just start. You can't cultivate a habit that doesn't exist. So start small and build from there. Next, try lukewarm tasks. Keep the Goldilocks rule in mind. One of the important sources of human happiness is working on tasks at a suitable level of difficulty, neither too hard nor too easy. So avoid focusing on tasks that are too difficult or too easy. Focus on tasks that are just right. Now, if a task is too easy, you're going to lack the motivation to carry it out. If the level of difficulty is suitable for your current situation and ability, you'll feel motivated to remain consistent with it. All right, next up, how to stick with good habits every day. How do you do that? The human brain needs some way to visualize our progress. If we're going to maintain motivation, we need to be able to see our wins. How do you do that? Well, habit trackers and other visual forms of measurement can really make your habits satisfying by providing clear evidence of the progress that you're making. You want to provide clear evidence of your progress by visually tracking your habits on a daily basis. At the end of each day, here's how to implement this. Write down the small tasks that you have completed. Just try doing this for 30 days. Observe and analyze your results. This will not only help you stay on track, it will also help you stay motivated to continue, and it'll let you know where maybe you need to put a little bit more effort into developing these habits or breaking the habits you want to break. And your final note here is this. Focus on the start, not the finish. Focus on the start, not the finish. Then create systems and habits to design the life you want. You can do this. Start small, build up from there, and get yourself going on the path to success and on the path towards building atomic habits. 